The next thing I'd like to talk about, using some footage from a, a music video I graded, a Jackson Harris music video directed by the Diamond Brothers, is the hue curves. This is a huge new feature, and it's a giant time saver. Hue curves exist in the gray area between a primary correction and a secondary correction in that they affect everything within the shot, but they affect things with great specificity based on subject hue. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's a very nice implementation of hue curves. Uh, my favorite aspect of them is that I can go ahead and click to sample an area of the image, and it automatically places control points where I need to go ahead and make the adjustment I want to do. So using hue versus sat, I can pump up the hue of his shirt, uh, desaturate it if I want. Very simple operation. If I want to go ahead and add another operation, I can go ahead and sample his face. I'll widen that out a little bit. And now I can pump up the saturation of his face. Uh, I didn't have to pull a key. I didn't have to make a lot of fiddly adjustments. Hue curves give me fast results. And because they're curves, the edges roll off really nicely. So I don't get the kind of edge artifacts uh, that I might have to work around in certain situations. It's a great additional tool for the toolkit. One other thing I wanted to point out is that hue curves, like everything else, can be limited. So in this shot, I've got this woman's shirt. And one thing I like to do when I'm grading a shot is I like to pull the subjects of the scene out of their environment a little bit. I, well, I like to differentiate the people from the environment, uh, add a little color contrast, make the image a little less monochromatic. So what I'm going to do with her is I'm going to go ahead and sample the color of her shirt. And I'm going to make a change to the hue. In this case, maybe I want to actually use hue versus hue. So I'm going to push that hue around very fast to do. But now I've dragged that graffiti along with me, which I don't necessarily want to do. To fix that, I'm going to open up a window. I'm going to turn on a circular window. And I'm going to go ahead and use it to isolate just her shirt. So if I turn off that OSC, you can see pretty much with two operations, three clicks, I've just gone ahead and completely changed her shirt. Very smooth. It looks very nice. Straightforward operation. So that's hue curves. Uh, next thing I'd like to go into is the RGB mixer. So Photoshop users out there, yeah, you've all used Photoshop. Uh, this is very similar to the channel mixer in Photoshop in that it allows you to mix any proportion of the three, uh, the red, green, and blue color channels into any other color channel. But one of the really cool things you can do is with one button, you can enable a monochrome mode. And in this monochrome mode, you can remix the proportion of red, green, and blue grayscale channels that get added together to create your final grayscale effect. Now, the default right here is basically what you get if you turn saturation down to zero. You know, it does the job, but it's maybe not the most exciting possibility for a given shot. What I can do here is I can go ahead and remix the effect. So let's say I want to have brighter skin tones. I can pump up the red channel's contribution reduce the blue channel's contribution. In fact, I can subtract one channel from another to create even more wonderful and strange effects. So with one fell swoop, I've gone ahead and created an entirely different grayscale effect. I'm going to add a version, and I'm going to do something different. Maybe I actually want to eliminate the red channel's contribution and pump up the blue channel's contribution. I want to give them more of a bronzed kind of band de soleil look. Um, so again, very quick to do. And if I toggle through the versions, you can see the vastly different kinds of grayscale effects you can create with just three sliders. So that's the RGB mixer.
Next thing I'd like to go into is image stabilization. How many times have you been sitting there with a client and they said, well, the shot's a little bit wiggly, but could you calm it down and you say, oh, well, I'll go into name the application that you like to use to do image stabilization. Um, and in my case, the clients are usually so keen for me to continue doing color correction that they say, oh, you know, never mind. I'll live with it for now. Maybe I'll fix it later on. I want you to just keep grading. Well, DaVinci already had an incredible tracker that you've probably already seen, and they used the same technology to create motion smoothing. So I'm going to go into the viewer, open up the tracking controls. In tracking type, I have a new mode, image stabilization. And I'm going to go ahead and click forward. And what's happening is that Resolve is automatically identifying every trackable feature in the image. You'll notice it's also identifying the subjects moving within the frame. It's doing, it's doing a tremendous amount of math that I can't even imagine under the hood. And it's doing it very quickly. It's just analyzed the entire shot. So now that I have it analyzed, I can go ahead and move to the front. And this smooth frame slider here allows me to apply how much smoothing I want to do. So I adjust the slider, I click Stabilize, and the effect is done. Now if I play through this shot, you can see that it's being smooth, it looks really nice, but I have these black intrusions, which are giving away the repositioning that's dynamically happening in order to make the smoothing happen. So that's great, maybe it's a little more smoothing than I need. I just want to calm the shot down, I don't want to pin it. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the smooth frames parameter, and I'm going to turn on stabilization zoom. I click the Stabilize button again. I don't have to reanalyze it. That's already been done. And now, when I play through, I can see that the stabilization has been added, and the shot has been zoomed into appropriately to eliminate any of those black intrusions from the corner of the frame. One thing I'd like to take the opportunity to point out is that DaVinci Resolve has an incredibly high-quality scaler. So this operation is probably the final look of the shot. You're not going to need to go to another application to get better scaling. This is really good scaling right here. So that tells the story of image stabilization. I'm going to go back to the color page, and I'm going to go into the last thing I'd like to demonstrate, which is Resolve 8's new support for Epic HDR media. I'm sure you've all heard about Red's epic HDR feature, it's phenomenal. Um, the few shots I've had an opportunity to grade, it's really going to change the way I approach problem shots if the filmmaker's shot in HDR mode. If you don't know what HDR mode is, essentially you set your exposure on the camera and Red is automatically and simultaneously recording an underexposed version of the very same image. Both of these images are recorded simultaneously. Your exposure is the A track. The underexposed image is the X track. And it's stored away. You can specify how underexposed underexposed is when it's recorded. And it's stored away until someone like me comes along to retrieve it for whatever reason. So this is an HDR clip. As you can see, she's exposed pretty well, but the background's kind of blown out. So I'm going to go ahead and build the node structure I'm going to need to retrieve that HDR information. I'm going to go ahead and choose nodes, add layer node, and in one fell swoop, that goes ahead and sets me up with two corrector nodes and a mixer node that mixes both of them together. Next thing I'm going to do is right-click in this node graph and choose add source. These blue bars off to the side here are the source state of the image. They're basically the thing that's sitting on the hard drive. Uh, so when I add another source, what I'm doing is I'm adding the possibility of piping in that extract data. And if I connect that second source bar to the RGB input of the second node, you can now see the top node 
is the normal exposure, the bottom node is this underexposure. Once I've got this set up, I can easily fade between the two by going into the key tab and using this post-mixing gain slider. Now the simplest thing I can do is to simply find a nice middle ground, blend both shots together, and then I can use that as my starting point, meet it in the middle basically, and continue grading from there. That's one approach. Another approach, let's say I'm working with uh, documentary footage, available light, and someone walks well exposed from the interior of a building into a bright exterior outdoor area. Well, I can go ahead and animate this post-mixing slider to automatically duck the shot appropriately to always have the best exposure. But that's not what I want to show you right now. What I want to show you is that ability to limit every single operation inside of Resolve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a window to combine the best parts of one exposure with the best parts of the other exposure. All I need to do is go into Windows. I'm going to use a power curve. And this is going to allow me to draw. And I'm just trying to make a point. This isn't going to be a tremendous work of art. A shape that outlines everything I want to effectively be underexposed. So I draw my shape. Invert it. And now I can see, if I move up to node one, I've got the best parts of my exposure with the best parts of the underexposure. And at this point, I can continue grading to achieve the final look that I need. Maybe adjust the contrast and the saturation of each half of this shot so that they blend together as seamlessly as possible. This is incredibly powerful. This isn't maybe the best example because I'm going to have to rotoscope her pretty closely. Uh, you can see some of that hallowing, but if I kept working on it, I could totally get rid of that. Um, but a better example would be imagine that window that's always getting blown out in the background. All you have to do is throw a power window over that, track it, you're, you're done. So it's a tremendous feature. Uh, I believe that's all I have time for now, so that's my favorite new features. There's tons more new features. Uh, you can go to the DaVinci website, learn more about them. It's a huge release, like I said. And uh, one other thing I should probably mention is that there is a free version of Resolve that's coming down the pipe, uh, Resolve Lite. I believe it's due out at the end of next month. So if you want to get your hands on it, give it a whirl and see if it's for you, that's something you can try out. So thanks so much. <laughs>